my check. It's a wonderful afternoon once again. Hello, everyone. Okay, so uh, it's 4.15 and on the dot, so we'll start now. Welcome to Tenopee Live Sharing. This is the series for you if you ever wanted to think about, hey, what can I do to become a better writer? We'll try and get some quick fixes this afternoon, all right, to launch your writing to another level. Uh, if you guys are interested, you could, of course, uh, get your parents to scan the QR code to join our Telegram group. We had some good and very interesting uh, answers this afternoon based on our homework that we sent last week. So if you are keen on looking at it, please give that a shot. Okay, but for now, let's go through the usual. All right. Today's lesson is going to be about what happened. We're going to do a quick recap just in case some of you didn't uh, come into class last week, of course. Uh, so we'll do that for you. And we're going to continue the story of John Doe. Who sabotaged his car? Don't know. Want to find out? Let's continue. Okay. So as we looked at uh, last week, um, we're going to go through these again, just in case. Okay, so a general overview of why we're learning these skills. Sometimes you will get some criticism like the following. So raise your hand if you have heard, don't write said slash went. Okay, you can't say said, you can't say, say went. But why? Why exactly can't we do that? All right. We're not showing a wide enough vocabulary. Okay, what can I do to show a wide vocabulary, teacher? Exactly what do you need? And finally, you have a couple of things like you re keep repeating the same words and your writing lacks details. Okay, how do we fix these? So these lessons are targeted to fix these specifically focusing on the idea of actions and what our actions can do. Okay, what can our actions do? How can we make them really work for us? All right, so last week we looked at how actions can show off personality. We're gonna have a little uh, recap video for that. Uh, and then of course you guys can uh, tell me what you think of the professor and I'm gonna show you later on. Uh, and how you know that based on what parts uh, of his personality, what actions this person does, okay? This lesson is gonna be about what happened in the story and how actions can develop a story. Okay, welcome, a lot of students joining in all at once. All right, so good to see you here. Uh, how actions develop your stories. So we're gonna look at that as well. And finally, number three, we're gonna to start to suspect some people, but we need to link their actions with some motives. They can't just have done stuff for no reason, right? Something that a P3 and P4 student will struggle with. I'm gonna try and fix that for you this afternoon, okay? For a quick recap, remember what I told you. Sometimes a character's actions do speak louder than words. So you can't, for example, hear Snape telling you, I am a very serious teacher. No, his actions show you how he is a very serious teacher. All right, so we're gonna look at another teacher from Harry Potter. Uh, and I want you guys to list down all of the actions that help tell you about his personality, all right? We're gonna try and figure out what his personality is in a little bit. Okay, and then you guys need proof about why. All right, so we're gonna watch this together. Please adjust your computer's volume. Uh, I really hope that everybody will be able to watch this. And if you aren't, please let me know so I can send you the link, all right? So let's watch this together. Uh, as a little bit of context, Harry Potter has just returned to the wizarding world where he's quite famous for defeating Lord Voldemort, okay? And he's meeting a lot of people. They wanna shake his hands, they wanna greet him. Uh, they wanna say hello and introduce themselves. Okay, so we're gonna look at some people who he meets along the way. Uh, focus on the guy with the, with the turban, with the head covering. Okay, that's Professor Quirrell. I want you guys to think about what is his personality and what's the proof that he is what I think he is, okay? So let's watch this together. Again, adjust your computer's volume. Welcome back, Mr. Potter. Welcome back. Doris Crockford, Mr. Potter. I can't believe I'm meeting you at last. Harry Potter, can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. Harry, this is Professor Quirrell. He'll be your defense against the dark arts teacher. Hogwarts. Oh, nice to meet you. Fearfully fascinating subject. Not that you need it, eh, hey, Potter? <laughs> yes, well, must be going now. <clears throat> Lots to buy. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, so this person, what kind of personality does he have? Do you guys have an inkling? Just from here, I don't need you to spoil the story for me. I'm sure a lot of you have watched it. This is a, a very popular series, definitely movie series and a, a set of books. But what kind of person is, is he, like based on what he's doing in this clip? Nervous, very shy, says Natalie. Good. 
So Natalie has started off our discussion saying he's very nervous, he's very shy. What are, what's the proof that he's a nervous and shy and antsy kind of person? How do I know that? How do I know that? Oh, he's stuttering. Hi, Harry P P Potter. I'm, I'm prof P Professor. Yeah, nervous people tend to stutter a lot. So that's an action, a thing that he's doing. What else is he doing? Yeah, besides stammering, stuttering, yes, what else is he doing? Do you want to look at it again? Let's uh, rewind just a little bit. I can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you. Hello, Professor. I didn't see you there. Harry, this is Professor Quirrell. He'll be your defense against the dark arts teacher at Hogwarts. Oh, nice to meet you. Fearfully fascinating subject. All right, okay, so Natalie's saying he has some sort of a nervous smile. What makes it a nervous smile? Yeah, he smiles and then he lets go of his smile like he's worried that, oh no, people watch me smile and it's kind of ugly. And then he smiles again and then he just sort of, he can't really decide whether he wants to smile or not. He seems to be shaking, says Chihan. Yeah, he's quivering, he's shaking, seems sensitive, doesn't want to... Uh, shake Harry's hand. That's a very good idea. Yeah, doesn't want to shake anybody. He seems like, oh no, please don't touch me. I'm so scared. <laughs> exactly. So if you guys pointed that all out, that's good because it helps us understand. But apart from that, you can already see a difference in the description. All right, by showing off the character's personality, you can also describe exactly what happened in the encounter, right? So there are two ways to go about it. A lot of you, or not a lot of you, okay, hopefully not a lot of you. By the end of this lesson, everybody should be writing a little bit more. Okay, so if I say Professor Quirrell greeted Harry Potter, it's not so vivid, is it? If I then tell you exactly what he said, can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you, Quirrell stuttered. Okay, so the way that he's saying it, when, when Harry held out his hand, Quirrell shyly pulled his hand away. Oh, oh, don't shake my hand. Oh, I'm so nervous, right? What are the differences? What are the differences in the way the actions are shown? I always do the second one, says Natalie. That's good. You like the effect. That's very good. Yeah, it's more vivid. Does anyone want to tell me how come it's more vivid? Oh, Upper May, your hand is raised. Do you want to explain? Yes? The first, the first example is more vague, while the second example is more vivid. Ah, it's more vague. Like, how did he greet Harry Potter? What did he do, right? Thank you very much, Upper May. Does anybody else want to add more information? Shihan, I see your hand is up. Natalie, your hand is up as well. I'll call you in the next round, I promise. All right, so um, the Professor Quirrell is like, the, sec the second one, he's like uh, shy and pull his hand away. Mm, yeah, so this, this example shows you that he's shy, where this example doesn't tell you what personality he has, right, Chihan? Yes. Well done. I like that idea, too. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. All right, so you want, you want to try and make sure that your uh, actions in your story can tell you a lot about the person, as much as you possibly can. All right, and as well, expand this idea. Greet it. What are the parts that go into a greeting? Step one, maybe you try and greet them by talking to them. Step two, maybe you try and shake people's hands. Okay, so exactly what goes into that. Uh, and then added benefit is what we call development, quote unquote. Okay, so development is the difference between this, which is very big, as Upper Mayor says, and this, which is a little longer. It helps you to score more marks. I'm not saying that longer writing makes you score more, but I am saying that the more details you have, the better, it, uh, the better able your reader is to imagine it. Okay, so if I can imagine your story very, very well, you will get marks for development. That's what it means. Okay, so let's recap. In our last episode, John Doe discovered he was in the hospital and he lost his memory. The police are guarding his door. He was visited by his mother, manager, and a nervous mechanic from the rival team. Three suspects. I don't know if you guys will catch on to this, but we'll be narrowing down our list gradually. We'll try and find out exactly what happened. Okay, now, as I'm sure everybody knows, if you ever have lost your memory, your first question is not, Oh, what shall I eat for lunch? Your first question will probably be something along the lines of, oh, what exactly happened to me? Now, the difference between a good writer and a good communicator, and a really bad one, is sometimes, it sometimes has to do with 
the level of detail we go into, right? So for example, if you ask this question to the investigator, who is the policeman standing at your door, you tell them, hey dude, what happened to me? I don't remember anything. And the in investi investigator, why is this such a weird word? The investigator explains, oh yeah, your car crashed. Your car crashed. Is this a sufficient answer? At least saying, oh, you might also ask where you are. Yeah, you might. But then judging by the uh, hospital room, you'll probably be able to guess. No, not a good explanation. The inv investigator explained that his car crashed. You guys are saying not a good, inv uh, not a good explanation. How come? Right, yeah, if your car crashed, how come I'm in hospital number one? And how come the police are guarding my bed like something bad happened? It's not detailed, says Chihan. Yeah, so if you guys are raging right now, that's exactly how your examiner feels when looking at some papers. If you don't explain exactly the steps that happen, you're gonna lose marks because it's not developed. I can't imagine it, okay? So it doesn't make sense. Why do the police think there's some sort of something wrong? Why are they suspecting that, oh, there's some possible sabotage going on, right? Why are we looking for a criminal if it's just a car crash? Cars crash all the time in Formula One. In Formula One, I'm gonna show you in a little bit, right? The key here, a key here is to try and find out who sabotaged his car. But of course, the, the other thing for you guys to learn is to make sure that your steps are very detailed. Okay, so you wanna help me understand what's the difference between my car crash and this. I'm gonna show you a quick video. Uh, this isn't the race that we're referring to naturally, okay? So the thing that happened in, the, in our story of John Doe will be slightly different from this. We're just calling on some real world examples here. Uh, why? Because we can see the level of detail that writing needs to have. Okay, so let's watch this together. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna see one of these uh, or or some some slight car collision, and then the engine's gonna catch fire. So let's go. Let's watch this together. Try and think about all of the details that happen. What are some action words you can add into the chat? Add into the chat. I want to see everybody participating. All right, that show exactly what happened to 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 give you the impression that the engine is on fire. How do I know? Okay. Is the car okay? It's in fire at the back of the car, I think. The engine is gone, okay? The engine is gone. Okay, so I'm going to call a couple of students. I hope you have your answers ready. You can type them in the chat just to take notes. Uh, I'm going to try and call Natalie. I did remember promising you you'd have a go. Okay, so Natalie, what are some details that show you the engine's probably not okay? For well, one thing, there is like smoke or fire coming up from the back, which is definitely not normal unless you purposely had that built in on your engine. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, you can tell that there's something wrong with the engine because he did spell which could damage it. It's possible. So by looking at that, at that swerve and the smoke, it's possible they are connected. So that's true. What else happened to the engine? It was spitting fire. It was spitting fire at the back. Oh, so scary. Thank you very much, Natalie. Bye. Bye. All right, so from Natalie's examples, you wanna show me step-by-step step all of the smaller details, all right, all of the smaller actions that go into, oh yeah, my car crashed, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys a different uh, a, a chart, okay? So when you think about all of the things that happen in your story, you also wanna think about what are the finer actions that I can split a big idea into? So for example, if you say, my car crashed, not so detailed. Can I split this up into small minute by minute exactly what happened, right? Step one, Mr. John Doe, let me explain to you. I'm the new investigator. Sorry, my, my colleague didn't explain it to you well. Okay, so Mr. John Doe, your car, you had gained the lead in the, re in the race. Okay, so action number one, you gained the lead. You were in first place. 
All of a sudden, a fire broke out. This is step two. Fire broke out at the back of your car. We think the engine caught fire. Step number three, exactly how did the crash happen then? Oh, the driver in second place could not swerve, could not turn. And that's why number four happened. The two cars collided with a loud bang. Boom. More details. Okay, so you see one big idea, split it up into four smaller ideas. It's like if you tell a friend, I want you to bake a cake. And then your friend asks you, I don't know, I need details. And you tell your friend, just bake the cake. That doesn't make sense, right? What are some things you might need to tell your friend in order for them to bake the cake? 4.30, says Natalie, I know. We did start a little bit later, so don't worry. We, we won't get through this as much as we can. What type of cake? Yeah, first you need all of these ingredients. Gather, give the instruction. Gather the ingredients. Okay, you need vanilla, flour, whatever. How to bake the cake, says Chiang. Exactly. What do you need to do then? Stir it, mix it. Yeah, put it in the oven. Probably put your, uh, what do you call it? Oven mitts on, otherwise you'll burn your hand putting your cake in the oven. And then what you need to do? You need to wait. Thank you, don't explode your cake. Okay, you need to wait. And when the timer goes off, you pull your cake out. If you don't tell your friend to pull your, their cake out when the timer goes off, then they're gonna keep the cake in the oven and burn it. Right? So give clear steps if you can. Likewise here, so the, uh, the what do you call that? The investigator is gonna ask Mr. John Doe, hey, do you remember anything, Mr. John Doe? Was there any suspicious behavior? If you just say, oh, I saw one action, I saw a suspicious person the night before the race. Not enough details, exactly what happened. You could have step one. Oh, I finished my practice. I got out of the car. I spotted a person wearing a black hoodie. All right, I'm going to get you guys to try and figure out what step two should be. And then step three could be, oh, uh, I tried to go near the shadowy figure, but he darted away. Oh, I shrugged it off. Maybe I don't need to be worried. Maybe this man is just lost. So what happens in the middle for you to try and go closer to this person and for you to think he's kind of suspicious? Suspicious person? Question, says Natalie. Yes, what's your question, Natalie? I ask him if you remember anything, and you say, and John knows says he remembers, but I thought he lost his memory, so how would he remember? Yeah, he's starting to get it back little bit by little bit. Is probably, it that fast? No, not, which is why he probably had to take some time to think about it. We're on day uh, two of our investigation, right, Natalie? Oh, okay, now I get it, thanks. Okay, I, all right, maybe I didn't give you guys clear procedure. Maya says, maybe he's looking at my car suspiciously. Maya, that's a good one. So he's looking at your car, but everybody looks at your car. Can we get more details? Everyone support Maya over here. Mike says, Jihan. Yes? Um, maybe like he is um, taking out a, a like seemingly looking like an engine or something and fumbling with it. Mm. Okay, so we have from Maya's answer, staring at the car. Uh, he could probably go near the engine, as you said, okay. Uh, trying to go near the engine. Is, is there anything suspicious about it? No, I mean that uh, he's like taking out an engine from a suitcase and then fumbling with it. Oh, fumbling with a, a, um, yeah, could be a device with a device. Looks like an engine. Uh, but it wouldn't look like an engine is quite large, so we will probably just talk about like a device. Is that okay? Okay. Some sort of metal device. Mm, thank you very much. Bye, Chihan. That's a good answer. Uh, let's look at the chat to see if there's anything else. He was going and touching my car with a sly smile. Okay, but if you can already see his face, maybe you will know exactly who that is, which is why we want to keep the mystery a little bit more. Uh, he could probably be touching your car, yes. He reached out about to touch my car. Okay, that's good. He's reaching out, he's gonna do something. All right, so he's wearing a black hoodie and he looks like a robber or a burglar. That's a good answer, okay? So we have all of these answers here. Uh, but notice here, we're looking at some actions. Staring at the car, step one. Trying to pull out some sort of metal device to maybe put on the engine. Maybe he reached out and he touched your car as well. Okay, so all of these are very good examples. So you have even more steps. So probably about five steps there. 
Okay, uh, these are some bonus questions for you to think about. I'm going to post one of these on Telegram, so don't worry. The bonus questions are, imagine you were the suspicious man in a black hoodie. How did you sabotage the car? So the first time you tried to do it, you got chased away because John Doe is right there. He noticed you and he tried to catch you already. Okay, so he had to run off. Now you run off, what are the other things you might do? Maybe you wanted to wait until everyone left the pit. The pit is the place where they service your car. You wait until everyone is gone. And then what do you do? Step two, step three, think about it on your own. Can I see? Uh, some of you typing, uh, Elise saying we tried damaging the car. Elise, do you want to give me more examples? Okay, I wait until everyone left the pit. So what did you do with your metallic device? Elise? Uh, try sketching it. Yes, try sketching the, oh no, John Doe would sketch it out for the police. Yes, that's good. But what is the, what is the suspicious man doing with the device? So if you were writing from the perspective of a suspicious man, first you wait for everyone to leave, then what do you do with the metallic device? Uh... Eat it. No, no, no. Where do you think he put the metallic device, Elise? In the car? In the car? Where exactly on the car? On the driver wheel. Under the wheels. Inside uh, the car? Inside the car, which part? The engine or the hood? Engine. Near the engine. Well done, Elise. Very exact. I love that. Okay. Uh, Natalie is saying that this character needs to go through an extra step. Maybe you need to hack the cameras first. Make sure that nobody sees you. I like that. Okay, you guys are thinking really far ahead, giving us exact steps. Okay, so these are your questions. Ah, bonus question number two, which I'm going to post on Telegram. Imagine you were John Doe's mother and you watched a car crash happen. Don't just say, I responded. Exactly what are the steps that happened? If you saw the car crash, what did you do next? So this is going to be on the Telegram chat. I want everybody to try and think of at least three actions that might happen after that. All right, they have to be exact actions. Don't just tell me, I felt sad. No, what exactly did you do? I cried is a bit more explicit than that. Okay, so you can try that. Okay, so we've come to the end of our lesson. Let me just do a quick summary. Uh, in summary, I want you to think smart. You don't have to have 101 different things happening in your compo, but you need to ask yourself, I have a big idea here, maybe a car crash. Uh, maybe my friend got injured. Can I break it up into smaller actions just to fill up the space and be more detailed about it? Okay, so these are the other things you want to think about when you're writing down detailed actions. All right, so you guys may leave, but if you want to continue our discussion, you want to join the Telegram group and tell me what uh, John Doe's mother did when the car crashed. Did she just cry about it? Did she just respond? What does that mean? If you want to try and uh, ask me your questions, you can, of course, sign up for the telegram group i'm just gonna wait here for a while okay you can stay back if you want to find out hey what other things we have in store for you natalie i like that answer could you put that in the telegram group okay all right so uh other things that we have for you english math and science most of the classes for your level will be 1.5 hours uh, our homework marking is extremely detailed and we have one-to-one -one online sessions as well uh, if you guys ever need some extra advice okay we also have some upcoming holiday workshops to look out for, so please visit our website and sign up because they're very good to have. Some of you might be interested in SG Grammar, for example. Okay, if your grammar is not so good, you want to look at the fine points and brush it up, please join uh, English as a Second Language, and we have a lot of bridging courses as well. Uh, I'm personally writing down the material for the P5 to P6 bridging program. So if that's something you're into, uh, please stay tuned. That'd be great. I'd love to have you in my class. Uh, and if you are very new to Tenopee, enjoy a free, free trial class. Uh, you don't lose anything by getting stuff for free. And I'm going to uh, entertain some uh, questions from you. Okay, so let's see. I have questions from Chihan. Your hand is raised. Uh, and I have questions from Aparman. If you have any other questions, please raise your hand so I can talk to you one by one. Uh, the rest of you, you can leave. Uh, yes. Yes. Did you have a question for me, Chihan? Uh, no, no. Um, it, it's past. Sorry. Past. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Apramea, you have a question for me? Could you put the the uh, barcode of the 
free trial class in the Telegram group chat because I'm unable to take a screenshot. Ah, okay. So uh, I think Maya needed this code. So uh, Maya, if you're done with this, I'll go to the next screen. Okay. Let's see here. This yeah, this one. Code? Okay. Yeah. Bye. All right. And, I and then after that, yes. um, could you please go to the John Doe page? Uh, John Doe page. Ah, okay. Uh, hold on one second. I want which John Doe page? Yeah, this one. Yeah. In this first step too, can I write that the person uh, lifted a banner saying, help, help. Ah, is that what was suspicious? Yeah, because he was wearing a black hoodie and usually people who wear black hoodies are usually up to no good by trying to steal and so on. Could so, be, but if the idea is that he sabotaged John Doe's engine, you want to think about it a bit more. Could, could be. Yeah, okay. what do you think? And then the Telegram group is the same as the one every week, right? Uh, this Telegram group? I don't know if you've posted your answer there, so I, I'm not really sure about that question. Okay, Ken, thank okay. you. Hi. Bye. All right, so Evangeline wants the Telegram code. Okay, so we have that. Uh, Elise, did you have a question for me? Is that about at first why did the car um caught on fire? Why did the car catch on fire? Because someone played with John Doe's engine, right? They probably put that metallic device that sparks and explodes inside his engine. Oh. Don't you think so? Yeah. Who do you think did it? Um I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, stay tuned. It could be fun to find out. Bye, Elise. Hope you had okay. fun. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, all right. So we have that and a QR code as well for the Telegram group. And uh, we'll try and post these other announcements on holiday classes there as well. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Can I see the suspects, says Elias? Uh, of course you can. The suspects were... Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. It's not this one. The suspects are John Doe's mom. Uh, and we have the nervous car mechanic. Let me see. Yes, visited by his mom, his manager, and a nervous car mechanic. Hmm, let's have a think. All right. Bye, Elise. Uh, Tieru, bye. Bye, Elias. I'll see you guys next week. Let's try and solve this together.